Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, February 15, 2021. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Omnibus operators plying the Kingstown to Georgetown route continue their suspension of service today over concerns with the newly legislated public health COVID-19 rules 2021, which required them to transport a maximum of half their permitted number of passengers. They were joined by their colleagues servicing the leeward side of the island, leaving many commuters across the mainland, St. Vincent, languishing for long hours, stranded. Our new team was on the ground today and spoke with a number of the operators about their concerns. We hear more in this report. The frustration level among omnibus operators came to a boiling point this afternoon just outside the Leeward bus terminal as operators of opposing views came head to head amidst the ongoing strike action. While there were a few operators seen plying their trade, the majority stayed off of the road and converged at both the Windward and Leeward bus terminals in support of each other. They later took their strike action to the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport tarmac, intent on coming to some resolution with authorities. The operators, persistent in their cries, complained that it is impossible to feed their families on seven passengers per trip. They do not tell me we get a compensation. I don't mind 18 passengers in a bus. Everybody wear the mask and we sanitize because they may compensate with nothing. Nothing at all. And the seven passengers cannot walk. Not the same as in the I have rent, I have loan, I have six children to feed. I was it no, me the driver, the conductor included in that 10. Still you're gonna have to, I have to pay for the full 18 passenger at the end of February. How am I gonna pay the government? And if I can't pay the government to keep my bus on the road, how am I? Gonna take care of my family. It thing rough out here. He was a jungle at Jurassic Park. Me tell you that, I'm joking. He used to work for 50 dollars. Now he drive up with me 30. Because here now, when he go up by the bank, they not tell him nothing about COVID. The 7 can't really work because my van is a gas van. And as you know, last week, gas raised. You walk the van, you have to maintain the van. So the little money we have here, we're not working with we'll call RS, put that in the family. We have parts to buy, we have tire to buy, we have insurance to meet up with. And we have the drivers and the conductors to meet up with. I'll be covering for a wrong trip from Joshua to back. $70 on average. My fuel consumption is $25. If you subtract that, I'm left with like $45 per wrong trip. Four wrong trips for the day, that leaves me with $180. Wages, driver and conductor, amongst to $150. So I'm leaving with $30 from that $180. To pay somebody to clean that van is $25. I'm left with $5. How am I supposed to survive? The government don't care about we. All they care about is people get from point A to point B. A breakdown of his daily expense was detailed by an omnibus operator who said his plight is what many operators are facing. I could walk under 12 passengers, three on each seat and one in front. I walk in Barley. I cannot walk with six, seven passengers in my van because, to be honest, seven passengers $28, right? That's $4 ahead, $28. I bought $35 gas, go barrel and come back. They ain't comfortable for me. Where are you working for? I work, I work Friday. Among the police, then we work Friday. I didn't say I make one fifty after I don't work. one fifty. I telling you. I couldn't even say I pay my car doctor. After I pay my car doctor, $40. Friday, $40 I give my conductor. Saturday my conductor refused to come work. And when I pay my conductor $40, even any driver get $110. What is that? The omnibus operators say the strike action will last for the entire week. However, there are those who are prepared to continue the strike for as long as it takes for the authorities to respond with favorable changes to the present regulations. Speaking with SVG TV News last week, President of the Vincentian Transportation Association, Roran Adams, said a meeting between the association and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is arranged for tomorrow, Tuesday, February 16th at 3 p.m. While the association levied its own suggestions to the government, minibus operators say in the immediate future, they hope that the regulations will be relaxed to allow them to carry at least 12 passengers. They are also advocating for constant sanitization of passengers upon entry of the omnibus and the overall sanitization of buses after every trip. 
It is left to be seen how the ongoing issue between the omnibus operators and the authorities will be handled. But one thing is sure, they are struggling and commuters are paying the price. Reporting for SVG TV News, I am Shafsha Speedwell Callum. Meanwhile, our news team spoke with several commuters at the Leeward bus terminal today on how the strike action has affected them. The views expressed were consistent. It was difficult to get into capital Kingston and worse to return home. Well, no, no bag of van ain't running and we, we can't go home because van strike and they over they publish it itself and talking about if Ralph thing wherever wherever so we can move ahead. The rider get come down so I don't know how going back home. I am waiting for a vehicle about an hour ago now and I can't get to go home. I have my daughter alone home and I can't get to go home and I, 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 I just sit down here waiting. I'm going to Spring Village. It's very hard, especially for the drivers there. I know it's very, very much hard. Because you have to take about seven people from Spring Village to Kingston. You cannot make anything. You have to, you have tire, you have gas, and so many things because the road is so bad. And every week you have to go to the, the mechanic. So I'm standing with them. Yeah. Over two hours and some. And I have my grandchild not supposed to be in this kind of environment and it's very unfair. What I am saying, if they say that they, the two posts on a seat is you know, I am good enough. All they have to do is put on like a $2 more or something, let people come to that agreement, have a meeting or something, and come to that agreement. You can't just do passenger like that. People who put in money in your pocket, if it's not us, the, the, the passenger, how are they going to make it? Several taxis were observed today packed beyond capacity at the Leeward bus terminal as persons desperate to get to their destination rushed the waiting vehicles, raising the question of whether the reduction in passengers and the subsequent strike is counterproductive to SVG's fight against COVID-19. And Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on radio today said that the union head, Roy Ron Adams, has reached out to the Minister of Transport and Works, Montgomery Daniel, and a meeting will be held soon. In the past, when they have a difficulty, they will make a telephone call. And uh, we, will, we will try and find the soonest day possible. But on this occasion... They withdrew their support, and there's a letter dated the 8th of February to Montgomery Daniel, but he only got his letter on Friday. He only got his on Friday, he came to see me. Mm -hmm. um, Julian had spoken to Mr. Adams about just over a week before and indicated that, um, you know, the soonest possible time we'll, we'll organize a meeting. Julian had done the calling, but nothing had happened. Then these regulations came, which clearly are going to affect um, minibuses. The Prime Minister said that some of the requests being made by the van drivers are unreasonable. The waiver of all vehicle license fees for a period of one year and reduction by 50% thereafter, F. <laughs> Waive of all traffic tickets for picking up and dropping off passengers to points other than at bus stops. And G, any other benefit that may be deemed appropriate in the circumstances. Well, as you will see now, the, the, the question of reduction of the... Uh, the reduction of the in, 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 in fuel price given duty-free concessions and, and, and all buses, 18 seats and over, um, a waiver of license fee for a period of one year and a reduction thereafter by 50% and waiving all traffic tickets. I think most persons would say that those are, those may not qualify under the option which could be defined as reasonable. 
In other news, SVG over the weekend period, Friday to Sunday, February 14, 2021, recorded 58 new COVID-19 cases. 23 of these cases were recorded on Friday, 11 on Saturday, and 24 on Sunday. 599 persons in total have recovered from the virus. 848 cases remain active, and six persons with COVID-19 have died. 1,453 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since March 2020. The public is reminded to wear a facial covering, a physical distance, sanitize hands and vaccinate to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Noted a decrease in COVID-19 cases in the country over the last few weeks. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said that this can be attributed to the wearing of masks. PM Gonzalez, who was speaking on radio on Sunday, said social distancing by COVID-19 positive cases has also proven to be effective. The wearing of masks, and I believe that people in, 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 in their homes are those who are who are tested positive i think they're doing distancing because the important point here if you look is persons up to the age of 44 in the in the categories 18 up to 44. The Prime Minister is confident that all will be well once persons do their part by following the protocols. He said the fight against the pandemic in SVG has been boosted with the availability of vaccines. Your, your hygiene of washing your hands and, and you wear the mask. We, we, we're going to be better. We're going to be, we, we, we're going to be able, all of us together, flatten the curve completely and and the vaccine is helping and we we are doing our part in this difficult world to get the vaccine leader of the opposition dr godwin friday his wife ave and son nicholas on sunday at the beckway Health Center received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, the Cover Shield Indian AstraZeneca. The Beckway Health Center was one of five medical facilities across SVG which administered the first dose of the vaccine to the first set of registered volunteers. The other centers which administered the vaccines voluntarily were the Union Island Health Center, the Bookerman's Polyclinic, Stubbs Polyclinic, and the Levi Latham Health Center. In total, for the week period, about 113 volunteers took their first dose of the vaccine at these health centers. In a telephone interview today with SVG TV News, the opposition leader said that he was always willing to take the vaccine and was informed by the chief medical officer that they were ready to administer the vaccine, which he took with no hesitation. The first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine and um, that, you know, was rather uneventful. I mean, it was, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. There was um, no real side effect, just the little soreness at the point of the the, um, the injection. <laughs> but you'd expect that. And I'm hoping that we will be able to complete the second uh, dose in about six weeks. They, they, they're feeling well. I think they may have a little bit more, um, like, a, slight fatigue and a small headache or something, a low headache. But other than that, they think they're fine. You know, I'm going to left this morning. I'm in St. Vincent now. Dr. Friday said though his son is not considered part of the Harris groups, he still volunteered to take the vaccine. My son, um, when he heard that we were doing it, he, you know, initially I hadn't really invited him because he wasn't really in the, you know, in the more uh, vulnerable uh, age group and, and didn't have any underlying conditions or such. But when he heard about it, he asked if he could do it. And I said, well, you know, come and see. You know, that was yesterday. And uh, if they would allow me to do it, and they came and they said yes. And I think it was a good um, gesture. Uh, he did it for his own reasons, health reasons, and so on. But it was a good gesture as well because it encourages young people to understand that, you know, they are also affected. Because what I find is so many people are um, they're skeptical. And um, skepticism is one thing. But, you know, being... Um, um, adverse to taking the, the, the vaccine creates a difficulty for us to reach to herd immunity. 
Dr. Friday said, do not mandatory. He is hoping that more Vincentians will come forward to take the COVID-19 vaccine. I hope for that reason as well, for my own personal protection, but also because of the, the public interest in ensuring that we can, um, you know, overcome this virus as a community, as, as a country. And then um, the example as well, that it goes to other persons that I am willing to do so if, as a public figure, it helps to motivate people who are thinking of doing so to go ahead and do so, and that in itself is a, is a positive effect. An individual decision. You know, I am not a scientist. I rely on the information that I receive as well. And I take it in good faith. I believe that it will offer protection to me, um, to my family, and that um, as part of a community, that the more of us do it, it will offer protection in the community. And um, hopefully it will encourage other persons who may be wavering and those who may even be um, not thinking of doing so to reconsider and say, well, yeah, maybe we should um, get this done. And Executive Director of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Anthony Radisford, was another of the volunteers who took the vaccine on Saturday, February 13th, at the Stubbs Polyclinic. In a telephone interview today with SVG TV News, Anthony detailed his experience. Very good experience. I was satisfied that people who dealt with me seemed professional. After that, I was asked to hang around for 15 minutes to make sure that, um, you know, I was okay to leave. The things that was outlined is that you may, you may get um, slight temperature and even a headache. And um, in that case, you know, they advise to take privacy tomorrow. Um, I have not experienced that, mm -hmm. so I'm lucky. I know a couple of people who have had it. Speaking on why he took the vaccine, Regisford said he looked at the science and encouraged like-minded persons to do the same. The demolition of three buildings was carried out today at Bentick Square, which is expected to be transformed into a modern bulk storage facility for the government. The Scrub family, who owns one of the properties at the outer end of the square, is in dismay that their property was acquired. Elliot Scrub said he and his siblings who own the property became aware of the issue sometime last week when he went to the building and found a lock on the door. Yeah, I had a lock on the gate. But I never locked it down, so I saw the lock when I came back up, was locked down. So I jumped over the gate, and then when I approached the door, the door for the building, it was nailed up. So I turned around, I called my sister immediately, and I told her, well, what happened? So I, she said, go to the police. I said, Paula, I'm tired. I'm not, I can't go up down. Let me just go in and there's... This, uh, this officer right behind me here, um, James, he passed and I saw him look across, you know, but I knew him. So I didn't really think anything of it. So I sat there, he turned around and he came back, he pulled up to the side of the building, he stayed in the car about for two or three minutes and then he came out, he said, what are you doing here? I said, the last thing I know that this is a family property and I am a scrub and I have a right to be here. He said, not anymore, get out now. Scrub related that his family has migrated but taxes continue to be paid on the property. He said that the deed and the title for the property is in one of his sister's name, who he claims has no knowledge of accusation. My mother, Gordon Allen. My grandfather passed away in the 18th of April, 1984, my grandfather passed away. And everything was turned over to the siblings. I know for a fact, my sister in America, Ingrid, Paula, she had the will, she had the title deed. So who negotiated with who? That we are trying to figure out. Because nobody touched base with my sister. My sister did not know anything about it. She is the one who have the will, the title deed for the property. 
Scrub said that the building was erected in 1960 by his grandfather, who left the property to him and his other siblings. According to Scrub, he has been making inquiries about the acquisition, but has been given the runaround. And they gave me a piece of paper, so I took it to the license office to find out about the taxes. Which the taxes was $850.46 on the taxes. So I went up to um, London Surveyor and I speak with a young lady and told her that is my, why am I here. She said, well, she will get somebody who will deal with me with that situation. I waited and I, a gentleman came, so I gave him my ID. I told him my name and why am I here. And he just, he was very rude. He turned to me, the government take the building. Go and see racial food. She is the attorney. So I came down, I tried to get in touch with Miss Ford. I got her on her own, she is not in, told me to wait, and you know, things of that nature. So I just got fed up. Well, the, before I leave, they said to leave my name and my number that Miss Ford will get back in touch with me. I did that. That was the Wednesday. I haven't heard anything from her since the Wednesday evening. I went back there the Thursday. No, I did not go back there the Thursday. I went there the Friday, and the secretary, secretary made a call, and the secretary came back and told me that she was instructed not to speak with me. Recently, during his contribution to the 2021 budget debate, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Sinclair Jimmy Prince, announced that as part of the country's COVID-19 response, a storage facility is needed with $326,000 budgeted for this project. So storage unit is paramount and the state is contemplating the construction of a modern bulk storage facility on a recently acquired property and located at Bentick Square. That the three very old buildings in the Daddy Shop area in that corner, Madam Speaker, and we intend to demolish them because they are dilapidated, most of it. We will do so soon. I think they were supposed to have started already. And then we will build on that a platform on which we will put containers, we will retrofit them, and we will have that as an emergency measure to ensure adequate bulk and cold storage are in close proximity to the operations because the, the, the lab is close by. It's very important, very strategic that we put the, the, the cold storage facilities close to the lab. Some news now on the Lasso Freire volcano measurements for the new lava dome were released over the weekend, which recorded at its height at 90 meters, estimated width at 332 meters and 618 meters in length. Lead scientist monitoring the volcano, Dr. Thomas Christopher, said that while the dome continues to grow, the rate at which it is doing so has slowed down based on the latest reading a few weeks ago. They did a dome survey on Friday, and the new volume we got was about um, 6.9 million cubic meters. That's the new volume. So it added just under a million cubic meters in the last um, 12 days, because it would have been roughly 12 days since we did the last survey. And basically the, what that means is that the growth rate has slowed down a bit. Um, it's just under a cubic meter per second, the growth rate is now. Um, the average over the entire eruption was... Um, around 1.5 cubic meters per second. So it's dropped a bit. It's coming out slightly slow over the past 12 days than it was um, at times in the past. But as I said in the past as well, it fluctuates, the growth rate fluctuates. It, it will if all goes well, another reading is expected by the end of this week. Dr. Christopher said that rock samples are still in the early stages of analysis, but that a meeting was held with UK scientists over the weekend samples that we sent. It's not the full analysis. There's still some data that we're waiting on. But, but we have received that data back. And this morning we had a meeting with um, the persons in the UK who, who we're um, cooperating with on this project. And we basically had a discussion about what we think we are seeing. And as I said, because the data is partial, there are limitations as to what we could say, or at the moment at least. I mean, as we get more information, then we'll be able to say more. Um, but from what we have seen, the, the material looks fairly similar to the 1979 um, material, but it's, it's slightly more enriched um, in silica and 
slightly less magnesium, so it means that it's slightly more evolved. But added that processing of further samples from the new lava dome is being hampered due to restrictions in the United Kingdom. COVID is, is affecting the UK as well. So um, it's, it's sort of slowing down the rate at which things are happening. And I think at least for one of the techniques, it can't happen until the lockdown has eased because they have to use um, a really nasty acid, hydrofluoric acid, to dissolve the rocks in. And there's a lot of health and safety issues in England, so you can't do that without the proper health and safety measures in place. So there might be limitations as to how much information we can get with regards to that sort of data. But what I can tell you is that the thin sections, which are the, the slices of rock that we put under a microscope, those are going to be made shortly, and then we can have a bit more to say about what is happening in these um, lavas, because that is when we look at it, at it under the microscope. And the staff of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, will be conducting a drive-through the Trumaca community on Tuesday, February 16, 2021, to update residents on the state of the Lasso Freire volcano and to provide information on evacuation procedures and individual preparedness. Nemo is reminding the public that no evacuation order notice has been issued and continues to appeal to the public to desist from visiting the Lasso Freire volcano, especially going into the crater, since doing so is extremely dangerous. Nemo said it was Will continue to provide regular updates on all activities taking place at the Lasso Freire volcano. Shrahil Moore, 26 years unemployed of New Montrose, has been sentenced to five years and two months for possession of unlawful firearm and three rounds of ammunition, respectively. The sentence was handed down on February the 12th at the Serious Offences Court by Chief Magistrate Ration Brown after the defendant was found guilty at the end of the trial. Moore was arrested and charged last year when members of the Rapid Response Unit executed a search warrant at his home and found one 9mm pistol and three rounds of 9mm ammunition. The sentences will run concurrently. Thank you.